Great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started with sharing my screen. So today we'll be focusing on the College of Architecture, but I do want to just give kind of an overview of WashU. So Washington University in St. Louis is a mid-sized research university located in St. Louis, Missouri, as is in the title. Um, so we have an undergraduate population of about seven to 8,000 students. Um, architecture is one of the five undergraduate divisions that we have. Um, the others are art, um, arts and sciences, engineering and business. Um, so when you come to WashU, you, you're an architecture student that's also kind of like in the midst of this larger university setting. Um, so that gives you access to kind of maybe things you wouldn't find in a traditional architecture school, like sports, Greek life, um, many, many clubs and organizations, and also a lot of different academic areas. Um, this is kind of an aerial view of our campus. Um, we're all like located centrally on one campus that's maybe like a mile end to end so it's all very like walkable and livable and um, this bottom left corner of uh, the six buildings here is considered the Sam Fox School um, so we're like right across from engineering but we're kind of on like the front lawn of the campus um, I do want to point out that this whole kind of like front half in front of Brookings this castle is actually all new can um, a lot of construction has been done in the past couple of years and we've put in like a new underground parking garage. We have um, built five different new buildings. Um, and one of those is uh, Wild Hall, which is part of the same Fox School. Um, Wild Hall is LEED Platinum certified, which is really wonderful sustainability wise um, and uh, serves as the studios for our graduate programs. So we also do have graduate programs um, in illustration and visual culture, visual arts, architecture, landscape architecture, urban design, et cetera, um, and also has our new digital fabrication suite. So if you do have the chance to visit campus at some point um, in the future, um, you'll be able to see kind of our, our refreshed and newly, um, yeah, just newly redone campus. Um, so I do want to like explain even what the Sandbox School is, because it's kind of a unique concept. Um, it's actually three different entities um, kind of all under the same umbrella. Um, it's the College of Architecture, which we'll be focusing on today. We also have a College of Art associated with us, and we also have an art museum, um, which is called the Mildred Lane Kemper Art Museum. Um, this is quite different than what you'd see typically in a university. Art and architecture departments are usually like completely separate, um, but for our school, we really wanted to kind of acknowledge the intersection of um, areas of art, design, architecture, fashion, um, etc. And that's why we formed the Sam Fox School. Uh, so when, when I say Sam Fox School, it means all these things, but, um, but also architecture. Um, so in the College of Architecture, we do have two different degree paths. Um, we have a Bachelor of Science in Architecture and a Bachelor of Arts. These are both pre-professional uh, degrees. Uh, so on your path to licensure, you would be required to do a master's program at some point. Um, so that's just something to note, and we can, you know, talk about the differences between professional and pre-professional, but um, I do want to note that um, the Bachelor of Science is, more, is heavier in the architecture credits and has more of a kind of capstone senior year um, where you're doing um, major architecture uh, projects versus the Bachelor of Arts um, allows more flexibility in credits for um, kind of double majoring or studying across disciplines. You do not have to know, like at this point, which one you want to do. Um, as an applicant, um, you're just basically applying to architecture, and then figuring out your degrees is something that you do when you talk to your advisor, who you know might be Georgia. So, um, we also have three different minors within architecture. So you can um, major in architecture and minor in landscape architecture, urban design, or architectural history and theory. So um, the program really starts, we just like hit the ground running with design. Um, it is a design and, and making oriented program. Um, you will get your hands dirty or sticky or, or whatever. Um, and when you arrive as a first year student, you're immediately assigned a studio space, um, kind of in the larger um, architecture studio. Um, and this kind of becomes your home base um, for making and for experimentation. Um, like I mentioned, we're super, super hands-on, which um, we start the program very analog, which 
means you're going to be working with paper or basswood and gluing and cutting and really kind of getting physical. Um, and we're a program that really kind of emphasizes both the importance of doing things um, both by hand and also on the computer. Um, and just the way that kind of working back and forth helps you understand space differently than just like using the computer entirely. Um, but uh, really the, the program kind of introduces you to um, just how to be a designer and how to address the way that humans interact with a built environment. Um, so your first five semesters, you go through um, what's called like the core semesters. And it's the specific sequence that runs you through different kinds of natural themes um, like air, water, light, climate, etc. And then um, also different kinds of scales. So thinking about, you know, the relationship of a person to another person in a seating arrangement or a person to a classroom or a micro home space or then to like a larger kind of community public space. Um, so these are kind of examples of, of the kinds of variations in scale, but also in materials um, and analog and digital processes that you'll work with. When you get to your junior year, this is where you start to take specific courses. And these are much smaller and more uh, specified towards different areas of faculty research. Um, and this is where like you can start to kind of hone in on very specific parts of architecture because architecture in itself is a very varied field. Um, and there's lots of different kind of offshoots. Um, so you might kind of take a class more in materials and thinking about how to do concrete castings. Um, or you might think about river systems um, or urban ecology um, or you know public housing and community work. So um, again, this is really kind of where you get specific. Um, and this kind of also might translate to where you go in your graduate studies. We also focus on building systems, which is kind of like the physics calculus side of things. Um, so you will learn a little bit of the, the engineering side. But I do want to say that the program is really focused on design and making. Um, it's not an engineering program. Um, and then we also are considering um, the relationship of architecture to culture, to the environment, to communities. Um, we know that we're not just building in a vacuum and that everything we do kind of affects other people. Um, and also the environment. And so the coursework also focuses on sustainability and the environment as well. Um, we are a research university and that really does translate down to um, the way that we kind of address um, our, our the research in the architecture program. Um, and a lot of that will allow you to kind of um, take a problem and isolate it and think about how it relates to architecture and then learn to how to like present that to faculty and critics in a professional manner. Um, and I also want to say that with being the sandbox school and being kind of adjacent to an art program, design also kind of expands beyond just like buildings or spaces. Like we think about architecture as it relates to industrial design, product design. Um, this, these images you're seeing are actually from a class where they're thinking about architectural skin as like, gar like garments or textiles. Um, so there's kind of this area for like collaboration and expanding upon um, what design means. Um, this is from a class that's about uh, bicycles and, and reconstructing um, new machines basically from salvaged bike parts. And it's a really popular class for architecture students. Um, reviews are a really, really important part of our school. Um, getting constant feedback is like really kind of the crux of of the way we teach. Um, you're working in iterations, you're kind of constantly tackling this problem, and nobody's going to assume that you're going to get like the answer correctly or that there even is a correct answer. And so really like from class to class, like your faculty are working with you individually. Um, they'll visit your desk and kind of check up on what you're doing, maybe provide some, um, some insight or um, challenge you to, to push things even further. Um, but really, we do maintain a small student to faculty ratio. Um, so even if you're in a large architecture studio, there's like five different professors to 60 students. So you still get that kind of small um, school and class feeling. Um, I do want to mention we also have a career services office. Um, so we do have a career center on our main campus, which um, is a resource for all students across WashU. 
Uh, but we have our own architecture advisor who's like really plugged into our alumni network um, and also is like an expert on different steps you might take as an architect. Um, and so we do a lot of um, kind of coaching on writing resumes and applications, preparing the portfolio for graduate school, finding internships and job opportunities. Um, we do road shows, which are coordinated group trips to different major cities in the United States, um, where you'll visit different like architecture firms and design studios that are run by our alums. That gives you a little bit more exposure to the professional field and also allows you a chance to kind of network and meet new people. Um, we also have an office for socially engaged practice, which serves as like a really awesome hub for students who are interested in using their, their creative practice to work with the community or to make some sort of like social or environmental change, um, which I think is very much kind of at the heart of our architecture program. Um, so this, this office really connects us with different communities or organizations or individuals in St. Louis um, that allow us to, to kind of facilitate our teaching um, beyond just like WashU's campus. Um, I also wanted to show just images of our studios and spaces. I know that it's really frustrating not being able to visit schools right now, and um, you know, it's, you know, it's hard to harder to kind of get a sense of what spaces you'll have. But um, I do want to mention we have a full wood shop and metal shop just for the architecture program. So this is where you'll do kind of bigger um, cuts and and major larger projects. Um, we have a brand new digital fabrication studio. Um, that has all of our laser cutting, 3D printing, CNC milling um, resources all in kind of one place. Um, we have our own art and architecture library, which is kind of really special. Um, and again, being a research school, like you're probably going to be like actually like not just Googling things on the internet, but actually like pulling books and, and doing really in-depth research on different architects and designers. Um, and this is, I think, one of like 13 libraries that WashU has on its campus. Um, we have beautiful common spaces, too, for, for gathering and collaborating. Um, this is a courtyard in a new building, which has this two-story green wall in it. Um, so those are actually living plant species, and they're watered by an irrigation system that's collecting rainwater from the roof. Um, this is kind of a different common space uh, downstairs, um, which has a mural project wall which will show off different um, projects by our alumni. Um, and then like literally right across from the path from your studio is the Mildred Lane Kemper Art Museum. Uh, this is quite an amazing resource uh, for anybody who's like interested in museum or curatorial studies, in education, in art history, or just like in art in general. Um, we bring in kind of a really dynamic array of exhibitions um, that are very kind of like contemporary and um, not only that, we have uh, just like a really awesome permanent collection of works. Um, and as a student, you have a membership to the museum. And that also gives you kind of special privileges. So you can um, request special viewings of pieces that might not be on display. Um, so a lot of architecture courses will also like take you to the museum and use it as a site to study space and, and composition and, and things like that. Um, I also wanted to mention a little bit about St. Louis because when you're going to college, you're also, for the most part, like relocating to a new, new kind of environment. Um, some kind of special places in St. Louis are uh, Forest Park, which is a 1,300 acre city park that's like right across the street from the architecture school. Um, it's got amazing there's like resources in it, like the Science Center, the St. Louis Zoo, um, the World's Fair Pavilion. Um, the one of my favorites is the St. Louis Art Museum, um, which looks out on this like kind of big sloping hill where they'll show like movies or do concerts in the summer. Um, and when it snows, people will sled down it because it's like a pretty steep hill. Um, so these are all just again like kind of like a brief walk across um, the streets. Um, and all of these um, places that I mentioned are also free to visit, like they don't require admissions fees, um, which makes kind of viewing art and culture around St. Louis like very affordable. Um, kind of like further into, um, or like deeper into St. Louis City, there's um, Grand Arts Center District where we have um, 
the the Fox Theater. Um, this is the Pulitzer Arts Foundation, which was designed by Tadao Ando, who's like a really famous architect. Um, and it's right kind of adjacent to the Contemporary Art Museum, where some of our students have actually had the opportunity to do like these kind of um, installations. Um, and uh, not far from us, we all also have a, a really wonderful sculpture park that you'll probably visit for a class. Um, and beyond that, like St. Louis is just a really, it's like a mid-sized city. It's an affordable place to live. It's the number one place for startup companies right now. Um, we're a great sports town. Like if you're interested in baseball or hockey, like we got it. Um, and if you kind of Google what St. Louis looks like, this is a typical image that comes up. We have St. Louis Arch or the Gateway Arch, sorry, and the downtown area. But actually, campus is kind of more tucked back, uh, <clears throat> like a few miles back in this image. Um, we're in much more of a residential area. Um, we're kind of in this, like, neighborhood where, I don't know, It's I guess I want to mention that it's, like, not, like, a super fast-paced, like, metro area. It's, um, it's quite lax, and there's lots of great uh, affordable housing for students right around the area. Um, as well as amazing shops and eateries and things like that. Um, so I won't spend really any time talking about the admissions and portfolio process. Since you're all seniors, you've already gone through that process. But um, if you have chosen to submit a portfolio for architecture, it is a, um, a pretty significant part of your application. Um, Georgia and I kind of sit in on the admissions process. So we've gone through and reviewed all of your work. And um, we do talk about it kind of in this larger picture of your application. Um, so yeah, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, I don't know, we'd love to hear any questions that you all have about the architecture program, about WashU in general, about the city of St. Louis. Um, feel free to drop them in the chat or you can just unmute and ask us out loud. Um, Tanya asks, uh, or sorry, um, Taylor asks, how many architecture students are in the program in all years? Great question. In the undergraduate side, there's about 200 students total. Um, we also have maybe like 300 graduate students too that you'll you'll kind of interact with um, on the day to day. But that breaks down roughly to like 50 or 60 students in each incoming class. I will mention that the small size also like means that you're not competing a lot for like your faculty's attention or for the use of facilities and resources. Like I, I feel like there's not like all these people like trying to get into the laser lab at the same time. Like there's like space and there's time um, for our students because we're a small program. Georgia, we have a question. Is it possible to minor in civil engineering? I will let you answer that question. <laughs> Mute myself. Okay, there we go. Um, the engineering school is one area where it's not quite as easy to do second majors or minors. Uh, computer science is one that you can do. You can certainly take courses in engineering, and we can try to put together a program for you, but I think it might be unlikely that you could do a minor. And I will say, I know that there's this kind of general interest in, in combining architecture and engineering, but I think at our school, they're kind of quite different. Again, like engineering is engineering. Architecture is, is really about design. I would say that it doesn't put you at like a professional disadvantage to not have like engineering studies somewhere in your college career. Um, because when you get to the graduate level and also like when you work in an architecture firm, we kind of work collaboratively with engineers to kind of execute designs and buildings. So I would say that, like, don't feel, like, really stressed about not being able to, like, fit in a bunch of engineering credits. Um, you'll still learn important um, physics and calculus stuff as it relates to architecture, and then you'll learn a lot about how to be an amazing designer. Good question, how accessible are architecture courses for non-arts or architecture students? It's a great question. And we've actually 
come up with a new minor in architecture. Um, so if you're not in the architecture school, you can take architecture elective coursework. And I think a lot of that starts with a course called Architecture for Non-Architects, and that introduces you to the design process. And then you can start to take a little bit more advanced coursework. Um, but yeah, as long as it fits into your schedule, really, is kind of catch. Um, architecture studios are generally longer than like a normal lecture class. Um, they're three hours minimum, sometimes four. Um, so it just has to like fit into your schedule. Um, but that's something your advisor can help you figure out. What other questions do people have? What are housing options for a couple of years? Great question. So housing is actually guaranteed for all four years. Um, first year, you're required to live on campus. Um, we have a specific area called the South 40, which is the 40 acres south of campus, but it's like adjacent, like they're right across the street from each other. Uh, and this is where first years and second years live. Um, I think generally, you before you enroll like after you enroll you receive like a survey on like your kind of living habits as a person like how messy you are how much noise you can tolerate um and then you kind of get matched with somebody who is um compatible with you um so generally most rooms are doubles um there's different kinds of like housing and residential halls um some of them are more traditional where you'll have like double rooms or triple rooms and then like shared bathrooms. Um, a lot of the housing at WashU is suite style. So that might be like four people kind of live almost like in an apartment together or like two, two people will share a bathroom with another two people. Um, so the residents all are, are amazing. Um, they're super comfortable and there's um, an eatery like right there that is open really late at night. Um, and there's lots of like common uh, areas for, for working and studying together and also fun stuff. Like there's like a separate gym for the South 40. There's uh, basketball courts, there's swings, there's volleyball. There's kind of this big field in the middle of all of the buildings that they'll use for like concerts or like petting zoos or they'll do like the Holy Festival. Um, so it also becomes kind of a place for people to gather as well. Um, after your first year, you have a little bit more choice with like who you want to live with. Um, so that's where people will like form like suites or apartments together and live on campus. Um, a lot of people also move off campus, usually around their junior year. Um, there's apartments and houses that are available to rent right around the area. Um, so that's when I think like when people kind of become friends with other architects, um, they kind of have these tight knit groups, they'll rent a house together and all live together too. Um, but if you are a junior or senior, you can still live on campus, too, and there's kind of a, a separate area um, called the village. Good question. Another question. Oh, okay. Um, do you tend to see architecture students branch out to uh, other people in different disciplines? Yes. Um, and so that's actually kind of a reason I think people choose to come to Washington for architecture is because they're interested in, in meeting other people and kind of collaboration and that potential. Um, so architecture students like their main coursework is architecture, but you also have a number of elective credits um, that are for taking courses outside of your area. Um, so we have people in architecture who are interested in environmental science or psychology or urban studies or even things that not, aren't necessarily like directly related to architecture, like they might study a language or they might be in art. Um, there's like 90 other different <laughs> majors that you can take courses in. Um, and so, I think a lot of architecture students, you know, make these really kind of tight knit groups of friends within their discipline, 
but also have the potential to meet so many people outside through the classes that they're taking, through who they're living with, um, through clubs and organizations, through Greek life, sports, etc. Um, so you do get, get that potential to, to kind of branch out. Um, Georgia, I don't know if you have anything to, to add to that. Well, I think that people know people everywhere, and um, architecture itself is close-knit. Some of your best friends will be the people that you're in studio with because you're in there for long periods of time working on things. But um, we have I just spoke to someone yesterday who's a football player who's in architecture. So there are all kinds of ways that you meet other people on campus and that you work with them either in organizations or in um other classes. Everybody takes freshman writing, architects take calculus, and there are people from all over campus taking those classes. So you get to meet a lot of people and you get involved in a lot of other things, not just architecture. Georgia, do you want to answer the question about research opportunities in architecture too? Research? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think one of the things that people uh, don't really realize is that when there's a research university, people do research in everything. Uh, it's likely that people somehow think research is a laboratory thing, and you do it at the medical school or something like that. And yes, lots of people do, and we do have research at the medical school. But because our faculty at Washington U are always doing what they're teaching, they bring to the classroom things that are new, things that are interesting, things that are sort of on the edge and involved in research, and the students can get involved in those as well. So if a faculty member brings something up, if they're working on waterways in Vietnam, which Derek Hoverlin is doing, or other things, our students can ask about those things and get involved. And both art and architecture are, in a sense, research all by themselves because they are creating something new out of different materials. And we have students who do design build projects in the city of St. Louis. A couple of years ago, we had an ongoing project that may still be going, working in apartments in the area near the university, students who were planning and redesigning interiors of buildings that had been purchased nearby to sort of refit them for students. And so there are opportunities to study, research, invent, create, work with faculty, create projects on your own. There's actually an office of research on campus, and you can apply for grants to work with summer research. So lots of opportunities, and it really just takes you hearing about something and being interested and asking, and then you can become involved. Hmm. Can we talk about favorite projects that architecture students have gotten involved in outside of school? Georgia, I feel like you know a lot, a lot more about those. Well, some of them have been design build. Uh, a few years ago, uh, students uh, completely reworked a parking lot in the city of St. Louis and turned it into an outdoor garden for a, a public grade school. It involved getting permission to use that space, which wasn't being used, and planning it and making it work for a place where students had a, an outdoor playground that was actually green and had bushes and trees and plants. We have students who have done um, solar housing projects. There's a couple of those. We have an organization on campus in the architecture school called um, NOMAS, which is the National organization of minority architects and they have competitions every year where our students um, create new buildings or new structures and so they will become involved in creating that. We've also had students who've worked on interior designs at our medical school and that went on for a couple of years in buildings um, just on the other side of the big park in front of our school is our medical school and um, they will invite students to work uh, on interior spaces there. And so they're able to go there and investigate and figure out how to redo an area that will make it more accessible, more interesting. 
So there are almost always opportunities for students to do designed build projects, not usually on our campus, but often in the city surrounding us. Yeah, some other things I mentioned are um, community building is kind of a really popular class. It's open for anybody in the university, but is mostly taken by architects. And it involves kind of researching St. Louis and actually getting like on a bus and visiting different sites. Um, there's, St. Louis has had like a, a pretty broad history of, of urban design um, issues and policies. And so it is in itself like a really interesting thing to study. So. Um, you'll visit a lot of the kind of counties around St. Louis and different sites that have been like demolished. Like Pruitt Igo is like a really kind of famous site that the architecture students visit. Um, I know that uh, this is a really popular class, but um, Derek Hasselin teaches a class about like river systems, and he they all they study like the Missouri and the Mississippi River and the confluence, and they actually like do a kayaking and canoeing trip like down the river to like actually be on it so i know that the students really enjoy that because they actually get to get outside and 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 visit the site we also have a summer and sometimes fall program for students young students from grade schools in the city of st louis called the alberti program and undergraduate students are some of the teachers in that program and it's a way of introducing young people to the field of architecture and hopefully Encourage, encouraging them to continue that study and become part of a pipeline into architecture schools. And it's really popular for our architecture students to become teachers in that program and to work with the young people. It's been going on for a long time. We're in a kind of redevelopment stage right now because we haven't been able to do it with the pandemic, but it's going to begin again. And that's a popular place for our students to work and to really create architecture curriculum for these young people. So it's a kind of design build curriculum uh, project for our students. That's a great question, thank you. What else do people want to know about? Well, in the case that we're not getting any more questions, um, I will hang around in this session um, in, in case anybody wants to hang back and just like kind of chat or um, talk one on one. Um, but I'll drop my email into the chat. If anybody has any further questions about the architecture school or enrolling or what it's like to be a student, um, please send me a message and I'd be happy to, to get back to you or to connect you to our current students. Um, yeah, again, I'll be here if anybody has any questions, but I also won't make everybody kind of sit around and like stare at each other for the next 20 minutes. So um, thank you um, to everybody who's, um, again, like taking time out of their day to, to come and listen to us talk about the architecture program. Um, and I hope you're all doing well and staying healthy. And, and um, yeah, thanks for considering WashU. Yeah, uh, if you need us, you know where to find us. So thank you. and. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day and um, your weekend. Take care. Thank you.